Hey everyone, Michael Squirrel here. I'm the developer of Terror Guard. I'm going to do a quick, I don't know, 10 to 15 minute let's play of the game to give you a sense of what kind of experience you're in for. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit new game. Here's 1017. Here's our opening cutscene. The nation of Terror Guard has long been ruled with benevolence by the revered King Vincent Luther. One year ago, he unexpectedly passed away with no heir. Spooky. The throne passed on to the adopted brother of the king, an unruly socialite named Etten Densmore. Densmore's narcissism and bombast rendered him unready to lead the country. Terror Guard has changed dramatically over the past year under Densmore's rule. He has made bold proclamations about purging those he has deemed unworthy of living in Terror Guard. That sounds bad. Quality of life has diminished significantly. Safety is no longer a reasonable expectation. Monsters have emerged and now roam the lands. The people feel uncared for and forgotten. Just what would it take for Terror Guard to get back to the way it was? Or to make things better than before? A small company of adventurers is about to find out. And this closing shot here of this scene of the empty throne. Hello? Are you there? It's an unusually dark night, even for Terror Guard. May I join you at your fire? And we have two choices here. One says, yes, welcome, character creation. The other says, no, leave us, randomize. Uh, so if you choose the randomize option, then uh, the characters that are in your party, their names, your starting location in the game world, your starting stats, and many other things are all just completely randomly selected for you. Uh, so if you want to jump right into the game, or maybe you're on a second playthrough or later, uh, doing a speedrun, whatever it is, uh, randomize uh, can be a really fun option. But uh, that skips a really interesting uh, opening scene here with this uh, old wizard character. So uh, let's say yes, welcome, character creation. Thank you very much, stranger. My name is Doral Green Meadow. I'm a traveler trying to see all of Terragard before I'm called away from this world. And what's your name? Well, first, would the four of you mind stepping closer to the fire? I can just barely see you from here. All right, so here's our character uh, selection screen. It's more of a character selection than a character creation. We can highlight over any of these characters and get a little bit of a description about them, uh, the kinds of weapons they equip, the kinds of skills they'll uh, learn. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of these characters in depth here, but there are eight, and they are very diverse. Uh, let's take the characters along the bottom here. Select the paladin for your party. Zero out of four characters have been selected. Uh, all right, so his default name is Emerson. Uh, characters' default names are randomized. Um, let's make his default name Squirrel. All right, so now the paladin is in our party. Let's also take the ranger. Uh, her default name is Via. That sounds like a lovely name to me. Uh, let's get the rogue, or the goblin rogue for the party. I always think uh, he looks cool. Almar. That sounds like a good goblin rogue name to me. Uh, and the wizard. Nice elf wizard. Uh, tig tiger tall. Tiger tail. Sounds good. Ah, uh, there you are. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I have a sense that the four of you are outsiders to Terror Guard. Would you mind sharing some stories with me? Tales from the outside world. Thank you. Squirrel, why don't you tell me where you're from? What kind of place did you grow up in? Uh, so, the series of questions that this Doral Green Meadow character is about to ask um, affect all kinds of things. Like I just mentioned, if you chose the randomized option, things like your starting stats, things like where you actually begin uh, the adventure in the game's world. Uh, the, it is a massive open world non-linear game, so uh, an enemy's kind of scale in um, strength to the levels of your characters, so uh, you're really capable of starting in several different areas in the game, and uh, from wherever you start out you can go in any direction that you want. Uh, and Doral Green Man is going to ask a series of questions here that affect those things, uh, and many other things that I don't want to spoil for you. Some of these answers will affect the game in some pretty surprising ways. Um, 
and these questions are great for getting a sense of who your characters are. You just selected these four characters because, I don't know, maybe you thought those classes sounded cool or sounded like they would be balanced, but uh, now we'll really get a sense of who these people actually are. Uh, so let's say I'm from a wealthy, bustling city. Ah, very good. I hope you recognize the privilege and opportunities that come from living in such a place. And what was that city called? Linden. So right here we actually get to enter the name uh, of the uh, bustling city that I just said I was from. And yeah, let's say uh, it's called Linden. Ah, uh, Linden. I think I've been there before once. What was it like growing up there? It was savage. It was so savage in Linden. Um, yeah, you know, let's say that. It was savage. Hmm, that's a shame. The place where we grow up can affect our lives in so many ways, good or bad, and yet it's something that we have no control over when we are born. What about your parents? Tell me, Squirrel, what did your father do? Uh, let's say that he was a... Let's see, so we lived in a bustling city. Uh, let's say that he was a doctor. Excellent, just excellent. Doctors are amazing. It takes so much hard work to become a doctor, but their work literally saves lives. And your mother, what was her line of work? Uh, same choices. I'm gonna say I never really knew her. I'm sorry, it can be very difficult to have to grow up without a mother, but never forget that there are always people who care about you, regardless of your biological family. What about your brothers and sisters, Squirrel? Do you have any? Uh, let's say that I have, uh, <laughs> let's say I have many brothers and sisters. And what was it like growing up with them? Uh, so I had so I had many brothers and sisters in a single parent household. We lived with our doctor father in a savage, bustling city. Um, so let's say that I didn't get to see them much, because the story that I'm kind of imagining in my head up to this point is that, you know, maybe because we you know, only had one parent to raise us, who was a doctor, who was busy, um, you know, maybe we were kind of a poor family. Maybe, uh, you know, the kids would just kind of run the streets and steal and do whatever they needed to do to get by and survive. Um, so let's say I didn't get to see them much. That's just kind of the story that I'm inventing in my head as I go through these questions. Doral says, that's too bad. I hope you get to reconnect with them at some point. I've actually met quite a few folks who only really got to know their siblings after reaching adulthood. So when did you decide you wanted to become an adventurer? Uh, so let's say that after having a life of crime on the savage streets, uh, you know, in my childhood, uh, let's say I was inspired by someone. An older adventurer, perhaps? A bard or maybe a mentor that you had an apprenticeship with? I think this is how most folks find their path. They get involved with just the right people. And what was the event that set you off on this journey? Um, so, from the previous question, I'm just kind of, as, as I'm forming this story in my head as I'm going through this, uh, you know, I'm kind of imagining like, okay, maybe, maybe my character met, you know, someone who, who was really wealthy, someone who was upper class, but who was also, you know, humble and heroic. And that kind of inspired me to to get out of that savage city of Linden uh, and and kind of change my life for the better and go on this adventure that my group of characters is now on. Um, so let's say... Uh, so all of these inciting incidents... I'm going to say I heard about an amazing treasure, because again, my character is all about you know, trying to get from the lower class to the you know middle class or upper class. So I'm going to say I heard about an amazing tr uh, treasure. Uh, maybe from that, you know, person who inspired me to go out on my own. Is that so? Well, Terragard is quite the wealthy country. If it's fortune you seek, I'm sure I'll have some luck here. By the way, forgive me, all of you, for only asking these questions of Squirrel. Tell me, how did you all meet? <laughs> At a tavern getting drunk. Uh, kind of a silly first option there. Uh, but let's say... Um, you know, let's say we're a family. Uh, and, you know, like, maybe these characters are my brothers and sisters. And once my main character got inspired to get out of the city and, and seek our own fortune. Maybe I was able to kind of rope in uh, my brothers and sisters. So let's say we're a family. Uh, beautiful, that's quite the diverse family. It's very precious that you're all traveling together. And of course, you know, this, you know, white male paladin and this elf ranger and this goblin rogue and this elf wizard, uh, they're probably not all biological siblings, but you know, maybe, you know, our single doctor father, uh, you know, just adopted a bunch of kids. Maybe he just had a big heart, but he was busy because he was a doctor and, uh, you know, he tried to help people as he could. And so these characters are all my brothers and sisters. 
And what was the thing that made you all decide to travel together? Um, so I think, like, with the narrative that I've been creating as we've gone, I think maybe seeking honor and glory? Those are noble things to seek, so long as they are sought for the greater good rather than ego. Wise words, Doyle Green Meadow. And now that you've arrived in Terragard, what are you hoping to do with your time here? Uh, let's say... You know, let's say, uh, become more cultured. Because, you know, we're a group of people who were all thieves as children, who maybe didn't get to see each other much, didn't feel strongly connected to our family, didn't have a lot of pride for where we were living. Uh, so let's say become more cultured. Very good, and I'm sure you will. Phew, that was quite a conversation. I wasn't expecting a chat for so long, but you seem like a very special individual. Hope we meet again. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Here, let me give you something. This is a map of Terragard. If you want to see where you are in the world, learn about an area you've visited, fast travel places you've been, or see what quests you've received, check this map. Those are all features in the game. BT dubs. Oh wait. Let me give you this too. It's called the Warding Stone. No, it's not just a rock, it's magical. Trust me. The Warding Stone can either lure monsters to you or repel them from you entirely. This is a very special artifact. Use it wisely. Yeah, so one of the uh, Terragard's more unique features as a role-playing game is that you can change the encounter rate uh, at any time. So if you want to just explore the game for a while, or you're tired of combat, uh, or whatever, um, you can turn off encounters entirely. Uh, if you are in the mood to grind, um, you can increase the encounter rate, whatever you want. Um, you know, play the game your way, you're the player. That's something that I always try to emphasize uh, in the games I create. Give player the choice to play the game the way they want. Well, with that, I'll be off. Thanks again. It was fun getting to know you. By the way, do you know where you're headed in the morning? So, yeah, here's the question that determines the uh, starting town where we'll find ourselves. Um, if you say wherever the road takes us, that'll just kind of pick a random one. Uh, let's say east to the capital. Ah, that city's called Bell Terrace. It was once a shining beacon of prosperity in Terragard. Now it's a dark place, sitting at the foot of a dark castle. I'll depart now. I've talked your ear off. But before I go, I just want to inform you, these are dangerous times. Terragard is not the bright kingdom that it once was. I know going on an adventure can be fun, but it can also be stressful and overwhelming. You'll find that many people in Terragard are struggling these days for some reason or another. I can see you making a real difference in the world, Squirrel. And then he leaves. Screen fades out, and here's our cinematic introduction to the game. Beautiful little shooting star going across the night sky there. A game by Michael Squirrel, that's me. Follow me on Twitter, at SquirrelMS. Uh, or you can send me an email at contact at michaelsquirrelgames.com. And my website is michaelsquirrelgames.com. Uh, please check it out if you're interested. The music of the game is from Vince Fept. Uh, when I first discovered Vince Fept's YouTube channel and he uploads all of his music there, uh, I really, really fell in love. He is such an extremely talented composer. Um, man, uh, this game has an incredible soundtrack that I love listening to, and it's all because of him. Thank you, Vince Fept. Uh, programming, Enterbrain, because it's an RPG maker game. Yanfly, because Yanfly uh, does so much, does such a solid service for all people who use RPG Maker uh, and Michael Squirrel because I, I did some of the programming in this game too. And the sun rises and a new day of adventure is about to unfold. The following day, Squirrel and company arrive in the city of Bell Terrace. While exploring, they overhear a commotion near one of the residential homes. So uh, still in a cutscene, our character is walking. Damn you, get out of my house, says someone named Karen Van Alden. Maybe we should see what's going on inside this home. It sounds like someone might need help. Uh, so if I open up this door and go inside, that's going to trigger a cutscene, which is going to activate our first quest. I am not going to do that. Uh, at this point, you have complete control of your character, and you can go anywhere you want. You can ignore that someone... Uh, it seems to be shouting inside this house here. There's someone who might need some help, and you can just go and do whatever you want. But let me open up the map screen. Uh, so, there are all these, you know, little clouds 
over the locations we haven't been, but uh, each area in this game is huge. You can really go to anywhere from anywhere. Um, it's just a massive open world game. I am really proud of this game. Uh, Terror Guard was incredibly difficult to develop because it was such an ambitious vision, uh, but here it is. And I really, really hope that uh, if you made it this far into the video, you'll buy the game and give it a try. I'd love to hear what you think about it, whether that's in a review on Steam or send me a tweet or send me an email. I mean, there's so much more that I can show. This game is absolutely humongous, uh, but I think this video has gone on long enough. So thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!